Welcome to the sketchbook tour. This is my mixed media sketchbook from August 2nd, 2022 to October 9th, 2023. The first piece in here I might have started a little bit earlier, but it's hard to track things. Sometimes you get a new sketchbook, you're excited to dive in, and so you do, and then promptly move back to the 17 other sketchbooks that you have lying around. Like, everyone else does that, right? It's an interesting sketchbook. I don't remember why I bought it originally, but I had fun with it throughout the whole process. This first piece was a watercolor lion, and I did this one much earlier than all the rest of the pieces. It was fun, and the paper responded well to the watercolor, but it did take on a little bit too much of the liquid. So I went to things like this, with brush pen, working on elementals and little critters. I love things like this. They're fun, and I love the layering, the subtle layering that brush pens allow me to do, where I started this one with the light yellows, and then slowly built up and up and up. There's also some white gel pen on here to add some clarity to the white portions to add little reflections and highlights and things like that. I continued to go with these elementals, really enjoying the brush pens. The one on the bottom is of course not inspired by a ghost and plant type, grass type Pokemon of course at all. And then the top one is kind of a wind or an air elemental in some capacity. I love things that have way too many eyes and so of course the piece on the top has more eyes than it probably ought to. This next page, of course, kept going with something similar, and we're continuing the motif of way too many eyes. This guy was kind of fun. I don't know if he's peering over something, or if he's just, this is his body composition. I had fun playing with the cutouts on his face, with the contrast of the dark mouth and things like that. This is a Tenari, an animal or creature of some kind, that is forged itself to the memories and thoughts of humans. That's why its appearance is creepy and kind of almost demonic in a way. I thought it would be fun to draw things like this, and so I fabricated a kind of being that would be just soul clung to idea, to concept, and thus the birth of the Tanari. So he's got skeletal components because humans tend to find skeletons and dead things terrifying, but there's also these ethereal pieces and it doesn't quite physically make sense. This is Demon Broccoli. I don't know that there's a whole lot of an explanation to it other than that. It's just kind of fun, and I enjoyed working on it, and so that's what this is. Um, the idea of some of these is I like working on these critters, these ones as well, that are devoid of any natural biological things. I don't have to think about circulatory systems or brains or any of that stuff. These are beings that are either elementals or they're like the Tanari, they are just bound to ideas and concepts. They're alive, they are soul-based beings, but they don't have any of these other things. I've continued to enjoy the brush pens and I've fallen in love with them after this. I do think Bristol paper is probably a better uh, solution for them, but I have enjoyed working in the mixed media paper as well. It also allows for heavier inks. This guy also riffing on that same concept and reminds me a little bit of Fantoon from Super Metroid. I love that game, always have, probably always will, and I spent a lot of time investing afternoons and early mornings into it when I was a child. But this is just riffing on that same concept of it's a being, it exists, but it doesn't have the same biology that we do in any capacity. And this is a rock, following the same idea, with way too many little blue eyes moving around its structure. I like the elementals, they seem lower stress to me. This one was actually for Inktober, I believe, last year. It's based off of a D&D, almost primordial, not a primordial god, but a demon king of oozes, Juiblex. I love how this guy looks, and so I riffed off of that for that creation. And here we get to some actual practice. Most of this has just been fun. These are quick reference-based people's portraits. People's portraits is not a good way to say that, but I'm not going to edit it out because this is more authentic this way. I have a tendency with these to lay down the light tones and then layer on the dark ones. Surprise, surprise, this next page has gotten a little bit better because that's what happens when you do things continually. When you stick to it, things generally improve. And these ones continue with that as well. Uh, I have a tendency to flip-flop on my sketchbooks, so sorry for that. But you'll see flipping from the vertical to horizontal as I go. I think I much more tend towards the horizontal formats these days. I just it's more pleasurable, my hand doesn't run into the spiral bindings, and I only use sketchbooks with spiral bindings if I can if I can swing it. Sometimes I accidentally order sketchbooks that have different kinds of bindings, but 
These drawings were a lot of fun. I was starting to pick up on more of the subtle emotions to these characters and to who they were. So this was enjoyable, and uh, it's always good to see progress as you continue to stick with something. This is a less ideal piece, but this was done with no reference. This was done after doing all those prior, and then seeing what I'd learned. And in that moment, I can see I did learn some things. There's some subtle intonations here that are beneficial that show that things are being accomplished and taken in. Of course, my progress is far slower than I would like it to be, but aren't we all that way? This is another one, but done with far less of the outlining, more just allowing the tones to be what they are. And I could only deal with humans that long before I had to come back and draw some kind of demonic dragon thing. This guy was a lot of fun. I love including way too many eyes, as we've seen already, but the subtle variances and intonations as the gradients move down, you the highlights on the top, the darker portions on the bottom, way too many teeth, teeth from different animals. Um, the cloth binding that is wrapping around the horns was initially supposed to be uh, tendons, but that didn't quite hold. This one was done by reference, at least the first one on the top right. The rest of them were just done from memory. I really like the dinosaur on the bottom of the page. I like how it turned out. The bullhorned guy above with the, <laughs> the nose ring is entertaining, but a little bit less rational. But again, it's a sketchbook. These things are for fun. More dinosaur studies. I think that's a Spinosaurus on the top. You'll notice that I started not using uh, solid outlines for the back limbs to try to show that they're slightly lighter, they're out of focus, they're further away from us. These were done from reference. I think reference work is really, really important. I harp on that. These were not, and you can tell they're not quite as good, though they might be conceivably more interesting. We've got the bird guy on the top, and then the guy on the bottom actually doesn't look terrible. These are a little strange. This one I really enjoyed though. I don't know why I didn't continue to work with it. Something about the red with the dark overlays was fun to work on and also just kind of intriguing. The one on the top looks like a monster from Yu-Gi-Oh, which, you know, we all have our things, right? This looks like Baroth from Monster Hunter to me and I, that had to have been what was in my mind. This one actually showed up in one of my first videos on the channel. I think that video is still public. Uh, if not, well, let me know. But this was done from reference, obviously, in early explorations in brush pen. These were early explorations in one of these. I don't remember the exact title of this thing, but uh, I'll show you real quick how the marks function. This is what a lot of the ink artists use, and they're really wonderful. They're really fantastic. They allow for a lot of subtle variation, but it's going to take me a lot of time to become proficient with it. I find it quite difficult, but I'll continue working with it. New tools, new pages. Ah, this one I really, really enjoyed working on. I started this by just laying out a random mesh of shapes and lines with no intention for what I was doing. And then I started building things. As I worked through it, all of these interesting creatures came out. This kitsune type fox thing diving in the ocean, a gulper eel, a barnacle, and then even eventually a kraken showing up in the background. There's lots of fish and bubbles. And I just, I had a blast working with this one. I wish I would have recorded it. I didn't record this but sometimes it's important to work off camera. This piece was done in a similar fashion. I laid down a whole bunch of random lines and just started sculpting things. This one was also enjoyable in another piece that I worked off camera. Whereas this one I did for a sketchbook session, a sketchbook session that after working on this two or three times, I was just not feeling it anymore. And so I walked away. And there hasn't been a ton of that in this sketchbook tour, but the reality is many of my sketchbooks have this, where I finish a piece halfway and I walk away. I think it's important to realize that sketchbooks are not what I'm showing here. They are not a finished product. They are a, an escape. They are an exploration. And so if you need to dismiss something and move on, do that. You can see that with that dinosaur right there, right? I didn't finish it. I enjoyed the first part of it, and when I stopped enjoying it, I moved on. The pink one here is inspired a little bit from Kezu from Monster Hunter. Uh, I like how the tail functions there. And the blue one down below, also kind of interesting. This was a sketchbook session as well, laid down again by just random lines that then I turn into things. I do kind of enjoy the like cybernetic frog guy. Um, and then the frog below is just cute. More non-reference ink drawings. I'm intrigued to see that I did a salamander here because I didn't remember doing this and it came up in Inktober. I did the little character riding a salamander. And uh, if only I'd looked back through this sketchbook, I would have already had some of the reference work for that. Another page, just random ink drawings. Cute little robot with the wheel. Dinosaur that I started putting together. The one in the center, though, I actually kind of enjoy. It's got this AI 
creepiness to it. it. Reminds me a little bit of GLaDOS. That guy's cool, weird, but I never finished it. I have lots of pages like this. Not a ton in this sketchbook, but lots of pages over my history of keeping sketchbooks where I just don't quite finish the thing. And I think it's okay. I think that's important. Maybe not important, I guess, but it's, it's allowable. You should allow yourself to do whatever you want in your sketchbooks. It's yours. And they're just an exploration of life. This is probably based on a redead from Zelda. Ah, yeah, I like the mushrooms. These were done when I was on vacation in Ohio last year, and these were all done from reference, brush pens that I took with me on my trip. It's important, I think, to take art supplies when you go on a trip. I, I vary how much I pack frequently, but this was done for a sketchbook session. I do not enjoy this piece. I do not like it. Uh, but again, it's just part of the reality. You're not going to have every piece turn out correctly. The eyes are not correct. The shadows are weird. These ones, however, I did enjoy. Colored pencil, little elemental-like creatures. The top two were a lot of fun to put together, and I just enjoy stuff like this. Another sketchbook session. These were ink drawings, I believe, that I took watercolor on top of. One of my favorite strategies in all of art making. This page is a good representation of the fact that if you draw a whole bunch of things, you're not going to end up with every one of them being great. There's a couple on here I really enjoy. I think they're cute. I think they're funny. And this is the reason why it's beneficial to draw lots and lots of things, because some of them will turn out well, but you won't know. You could always accidentally end up with things like this, drawings that don't turn out great. And because that one drawing took you forever, now you just feel like a failure. Do lots of things, lots of little things. I like this crocodile guy. I don't know why I didn't finish it. I really enjoyed it. I liked how it was going. But I kind of, I think I got bored. I think I just got bored moving through it. And that's okay. Again, my sketchbook. These guys were also done without reference, just like the last page. I like the bird guy. He's intriguing. And these are generally after I do a whole bunch of studying of animals. This is a page of thumbnails for large scale works. This one down below that's got the blue in there is actually modeled after the logo for the plane that my dad flew. I was thinking about doing a painting for him uh, for his hangar for his new planes. And I, I haven't landed on an idea that works yet. This one was experimenting with acrylic brush pens. So this is a totally different material. I really like the body design of this guy, especially the hips, because I feel like I kind of nailed that. Again, three eyes on each side. I can't help myself. I love things with creepy quantities of eyes. These are thumbnails for the large scale pieces I've been using as the background on my podcasts. The one on the top right is uh, for the Melting City, and I did that one for a series of podcasts. I have to explore things through thumbnail, especially for composition, because composition is just not my strong suit yet. This was another sketchbook session, randomly done by li laying down lines and shapes and forms and colors and then just building things off of those, whatever came to mind. This one was not nearly as successful. I didn't enjoy it as much, but that's just what happens sometimes when you're exploring, when you're just trying things. I'm just noticing now that it looks like a whole bunch of banana peels on the upper left. More thumbnail designs. It took a long time for me to nail down the uh, city beneath the rock that I'm working on in my current podcasts. It just was difficult for me to finish that. Rock studies, because I'm not very good at rocks. Studies and... Uh, no, these aren't studies, actually. These are just little pen drawings. And uh, that guy's... Yeah, that guy will probably come up later in something. Might have been in a session earlier, in fact. Ah, another full page brush pen drawing. This one was several sketchbook sessions, and I really enjoyed it. This again reminds me of Super Metroid things, either Fantoon or some of the stuff in Nadaria, I believe, was the um, the water region. But I enjoy these full things, and I, I should do more large ones, like this. This was also a set of sketchbook sessions and was a lot of fun. Random, I didn't know what I was doing when I started it, but eyes, 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 always eyes. I mean, how can you not? They're so much fun. A couple of limited sketches after finishing the big piece. This happens sometimes. Maybe it happens with you as well. I finish big things and then I, I don't seem to find my footing very well as I move forward. I don't remember. I didn't remember that I had this in here. This is a watercolor study from my most recent trip to Ohio. I was actually sitting on the shore of Lake Erie and just very quickly trying to sketch out with my paints what it looked like. And this pretty much accomplished it. I'm glad this is here. This is when I started moving into drawing swords and weapons. There's going to be a lot in the next couple page. Uh, next couple pages, goodness. 
but these are fun. They're low stress for me. And again, like I mentioned earlier, having many, many things on a page, many, many little drawings allows you to taste the overall success of your pieces because half of these, 75% of these are satisfactory to me and I enjoy them. This page, we get into some cloud studies, things that I was actually working on on my back porch, which I don't do enough of. I need to start working on things more that are, you know, working from life. Sorry about the overexposure here. The sun was just starting to come in through the window as I was finishing the recording. But I believe we only have a couple pages left. More clouds and rock studies. The ones on the bottom are actually starting to become realistic, starting to become what I want them to be. So that's it. That's it for this sketchbook. This is the first of the modern sketchbook tours that I've done. So I hope you enjoyed this. And most of all, I hope that you understand after watching this that a sketchbook is a tool for adventure, for investigation, for exploration. Don't feel like it has to be this beautiful landscaped thing that is perfect. That is not the point, or at least that is not the point that it has to have, right? It is your thing, your sketchbook, you decide how to use it. So I hope this was beneficial for you. Uh, I would love to hear from you in the comments below about your favorite drawing or something that you found humorous as I moved through these. And as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Have a good one, y'all. See you soon.